Okay, I wanted to do a series on um, op amps. And it's going to be a lot like the series I did on transistors, where I'm not going to give you equations and I'm not going to give you all the theory and everything. I just want you to get you used to um, why are things put together the way they are? You know, how, uh, w what do they do? You know, and more, more that I want you to be able to recognize circuits. Oh, that's an inverting amplifier. Oh, that's a such and such. That's a such and such. So um, I kind of want to go the way that I learned how to do it. Well, I learned how to do it from um, application uh, handbooks. And uh, th these are known to be one of the best ones ever written. National Semiconductor had these great uh, application handbooks. And look at this one. This one was actually sold by Radio Shack. So back in the day, um, you really had to beg the companies to give you application book because these were expensive to print. And so if you were, you know, working for a, a brand name company and, and you'd call them up and say, hey, can I get it? Can I can you send me out an application? But they say, yeah, sure. And they'd mail it to you, you know. Um, but if you're just some guy at home, they'd go, what company do you work for? Who? And they, they you know, you couldn't get a hold of it. Well, Radio Shack figured that out. And so Radio Shack, um, got National Semiconductor to print some just for them, and then they sold them at the store. Um, they sold them for two dollars and ninety-five cents in 1973. So 1973. How old was I in 1973? I was about 17. I think I was about 17. I was in high school, um, and so. You know, back then I could get on my bicycle and I could ride to Radio Shack and I could get things like this and I could get parts and I could get solder and I could get breadboards. I could get anything I wanted. I'd just ride my bicycle to, to Radio Shack. Well, kids can't do that anymore. It's really sad. It's really, really sad. Um, so anyway, uh, so I bought these in the way back days, right? Um, th they had uh, their number one handbook in 1970, 1973, and then they had their uh, handbook number two in 1977. So I rushed back and spent another $2.95. And um, in particular, there's one application note that basically taught me op amps. And that was application note number 20. Uh, Let's see here. Where's the beginning of number 20 here? 15, 20. There we go. Application note number 20. Uh, application guide for operational amplifiers. Man, I just, uh, I spent hours and hours and hours uh, reading application note number, number 20 and went through all these different circuits and stuff. I, I learned so much application note number 20. Um, I found a link for it. I'll, I'll put that down below so you can get yourself a copy of application note number 20. So if you want to know all of the stuff, application number 20 will teach you everything you need to know. <laughs> At least it did for me back then. So, so I wanted to do something for op amps. And I wanted to be able to have something that people could have um, and could actually use. They, they could hook it up to their own oscilloscope and they could see what was going on. Now, breadboards are fine. You know, you can do, you can do lots of things on breadboards, but they're kind of finicky and you, sometimes you get things wrong and, you know, you build one or two and then you get tired. I wanted to have a whole bunch of op-amp circuits already pre-built, all right? So I thought, oh, let, let me design a circuit and I'll lay out a PC board and then you guys could get that PC board if you wanted to and you could like play it, play along at home. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, PC board manufacturers have been bugging me uh, to be a spon to, to sponsor me and I don't, I don't want a sponsor. I, I don't like channels that have sponsors. But um, uh, PCB way was, was, uh, was nice enough to say, Hey, we'll just give you free boards. And, uh, so, you know, thanks, thanks for PC, uh, PCB way. So, uh, I did lay out a board and, uh, I had them built. Um, these are revision a boards. Uh, I'm doing a revision B. There was a couple errors and I'm doing a revision B. And, uh, so what I'm going to do is on their website, there is a section for, uh, shared projects. Okay. And so I'm going to have an MSI guy shared projects list. And, uh, there's going to be my digital prototype board my analog prototype board, my nano VNA SMA connector version, um, and this board. So all of those boards will be, will be on that site and you'll be able to, 
download the Gerbers if you want. Um, you could download the schematics. Uh, you could just push the order button and uh, they'll build them for you. Um, so it's, it's, it's really easy. It's a real easy thing to do. Um, a good sharing, a good sharing facility. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, load this up and then um, we will put it uh, on the next video. Uh, we'll go through the whole circuit and uh, the schematic and tell you what everything does. Uh, just, uh, just in general, a little, uh, note about the, uh, about the board itself. Let me zoom in. Okay. Here's the board. Um, it has a five, five, five timer that generates a clock. And then that clock goes through the, it generates a waveform. And then that waveform goes through all of these op amps. So uh, these are dual op amps. So it's, it's two, four, six, eight op amps. So eight different types of circuits. And, uh, so that's what will be here. There's test points all along the way. So you can follow it through. And then this little prototyping area down here, if you wanted to add, add your own circuits. Okay. And so let me show you an example of that here. I've added some little prototype things. Th this is the board I'm going to be using for the class that I'm going to have next video. And I've added a few little things down here so we can try, try different values out and stuff. But basically this is what the board's going to look like, uh, put together. There was some bodge wires I have on rev V rev a rev B is supposed to fix all those things. So, um, I'm going to be getting those in the mail soon. And, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, I, I suggest you put sockets on everything. Um, so you can try out different op amps. It should work with almost any generic op amps. I've tried them with L uh, 358s with O a TL 072s with, um, uh, any 5532, almost any, any generic op amp would work just, would, would work just fine. But I, so I suggest you, you suggest you put them on sockets and then all of the values are basically either a one K a 10 K or a hundred K resistor. And the only capacitors are 0.1 microfarads and that's it. So the parts list is very, 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 very low. So there you go. Um, I encourage you to, uh, to at least watch the next video if you're not going to even buy a board. Um, but uh, the next video hopefully will give you some ideas of non-inverting, inverting comparators, uh, uh, all kinds of, all kinds of different circuits that you might see, um, and hopefully give you a better idea of op amp design.